Hello, and welcome to my series, Ask an Angel, where we discuss topics related to the world of startups, entrepreneurs, and investing. I'm your host, Jonathan Hung, and on today's episode, I'm joined by Allende Alakoe. Thank you for showing up, Allende. It's great to have you. It's always great to see you, Jonathan. Yeah. You're one Wonderful. of my favorite so, investors, so... Oh, so. thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's a trick, everybody. Everybody I interview, I, I've uh, I've written a check to. No? <laughs> so, so, so I always check the checks in the mail. No? <laughs> but uh, let me let me do this. I'd love to do an intro about you. I would love to ask you some questions about your journey. So Allende has 18 years of startup experience focused on live streaming audio. He is the founder of Needle and the original creator of the iHeartRadio app, as well as former Pre- President Obama speechwriter. He was born in Washington, D.C. and lives has lived in L.A. for over two decades. Thank you so much for doing the show. So let, let's jump into it. Like twenty years old, I know I'm twenty-one you're years old. I, le- I moved here when I was one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into it. Um, what is Needle, and what's the story behind Needle, and how you develop the platform? Yeah, so Needle is an AI-powered platform for live audio discovery. Um, we uh, being in, in radio for you know, 20, 20 plus years, um, I, I really um, knew the power of radio in terms of bringing people together. I knew that uh, when President Obama gave his his farewell address and he talked about one of the main threats to U.S. democracy as being the fragmentation of media, I really believed that if, if we got lucky enough, because uh, uh, I was thinking about my third venture and what I was going to do, I really believed if we got lucky enough mm-hmm. that we could play a part in in bringing people back together, because radio is all about shared listening and and, and listening in real time, um, and then uh, and then the other piece was that um, I, I really saw a big disparity between who gets listened to in our society and who doesn't get listened to, and I felt like social media was creating a a, a huge uh, you know exacerbating that problem, and so mm-hmm. I believed that what if you could transcribe everybody's words in real time? What if you could make everybody searchable um, by doing that? Then that would even the the playing field because then everyone's words would be discoverable and then it wouldn't be up to an algorithm um, uh, of curation that would would say that, you know, that this person's words are more important or it wouldn't be a hate, hate algorithm or even a winner takes all algorithm. It would be an algorithm that's based on recency. And so everybody's mm-hmm. words got an e- equal, get an equal shot at being discovered by Jonathan when he searches for um, for a topic on cleaning or investing yeah. or whatever the topic might be. Yeah. So that's why we I mean, just, uh, that's why we created Needle. Wonderful. I mean, I always tell people this when I'm investing, whether as an angel or a venture capitalist, it's always about the team. You know, because I I invest in an early stage company, not not a company that has perfect mar- product market fit or has like a huge budget, you know, and just needs extra money to grow. It's really about the team. So I love to hear about, you know, I know I love your background and, you know, but I love to hear about more about your team, how you built a team and like, how are they important to your success? Yeah, the team is everything. Um, we um, I, when I when I look for a team member. I typically will find them through an investor or mm-hmm. I'll find them through a, on a project basis. Um, in one case, um, I really just, we just really needed to, to get our, our website um, uh, tightened up in preparation for uh, this big launch that we have this summer. Um, right. And, um, and uh, I brought on a guy who, um, who, who just, like jumped in and did more than what we asked him and just exceeded at every level. And it was so much fun working with him. I was like, you know, what are you doing for the rest of your life? Because right. Right. <laughs> it, 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 it was, it was clear that he had really important skills for startups, which, um, and, and the number one thing that he had is this is just um, the ability to get S done. Right. So he's mm-hmm. just, really good at just getting things done and getting them done quickly. And so, so that's why I brought him on the team and he's now running uh, operations for us. And, uh, mm-hmm. and then, uh, and then we have uh, an amazing person who helped to, to launch um, Beyonce's 
um, one of her surprise albums. And she came through an investor, um, mm. but just amazing um, marketing brain and mind and the way that she approaches everything is just amazing. But I think the, the key is in every situation, we're not talking about NDAs and contracts and how much I'm going to get paid and how much they're showing me that they're willing to put um, their, their, their skin in the game first. And I don't have to ask for that. And those are the, the relationships I know are going to work right off the bat. Right. Amazing. It's great. And you know what I loved about your background? You know, you created an amazing, you know, successful app, the iHeartRadio app. And so what is your formula for creating, you know, an successful product? You know, because it's so it's so hard to do. People think it's easy, like, oh, I have an idea. But then actually getting the, you know, the execution, getting there and building it, it, it's it's easier said than done. Well, it's funny because it doesn't ever look like I'm going to create this amazing product. Right. Yeah. What it looks like is. You know what I'm going to say. If you're an experienced uh, founder out there, you know exactly what I'm going to say next. It looks like I have this problem. How do I solve this problem for myself? And mm-hmm. then, oh, it appeals to other people too. And then you, and and then that's when it becomes something yeah. interesting, right? Uh, and and for me, it was. I, I I'll always remember. I was I was in Washington D.C. I hadn't moved to, to to the promised land yet of L.A. And I was um, I was working for WTOP. It was my first radio station, I, and I was on my way to becoming one of the top salespeople there, uh, radio advertising sales. And I was driving in, and just like a good salesperson, I was listening to my own product. I was listening yep. to the radio, <laughs> and and I was about to get out of the car, drove into the garage, about to get out of the car, and um, and I was listening to the news story and I didn't want to stop listening to the news story so I could get up to the office and get to my desk because this is 1998 uh, or 1999. And I was like, wait a second, why do I have to stop listening to this radio when I'm getting mm-hmm. out of my car? I've got my cell phone with me. I went straight up to the engineer when I got into the office. I said, um, is it possible to put WTOP on my cell phone? And and his response was, I'll never forget it. He said, yes, you can, but why would anybody want to? And that was the beginning of the journey, right? Yeah. And so, um, and, and then five years later came the, the foundation for iHeartRadio. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. I mean, and I love to ask this question about founders too in the very beginning, right? Because like when you're building, it's about like, what are you doing differently from your competitors? Like, what are they missing? I mean, I jokingly tell people like, you know, what, what's your grudge? What do you hold against? Not like something malicious, mm-hmm. but like a, something that's a chip on your shoulder that you want to prove what the current incumbents are doing. They're different that you can solve. Yeah. I, I, I think that, you know, in the name of curation, we're having an ever more controlled experience. And I think people, um, you know, I don't know how good or bad the Matrix Resurrections was or the uh, the last Matrix Inside, yeah, but mm-hmm. it still made a lot of money. People are still mm-hmm. trying to get out of the Matrix. And yet, whenever you go into one of these products, you you find yourself, hey, you just search for this. Don't you like this? Don't you da 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 da? And it's mm-hmm. all like this very ordered thing. And to be honest with you, Jonathan, all these products or most of these products are being made for investors. They're not yeah. being made for the actual consumers who use them. And that's because of the, I mean, we can talk about that in, a, in another podcast, perhaps, mm-hmm. but there's just a, an mm-hmm. imbalance, right? So a lot mm-hmm. of these, in, in, in a, lot of, a lot of investments, not yours, by the way, a lot of invest, investors are really focused on what they want, what they would use with their, right. their time for, they, they have um, high standards because they're driving these Teslas and they're driving this, and they have this amazing lifestyle and they want these things that they invest in to, to fit their lifestyles. But we've built a product and we're very proud of it. That's for everyone. Um, yeah. Whether you're driving a Tesla or, or driving a, a, a Tercel. I just pulled mm-hmm. that one. I can, I don't know if they <laughs> even make Tercels anymore, but, but that's, right. that's what we've built. We've built something for everyone um, because radio really um, and audio is something for audio has something for everyone. Tons of different use cases and tons of different users. Absolutely. Like, so switching gears, 
I end up, I'm curious, like your journey, you know, about funding, you know, that's another story in itself. Everyone thinks it's just product. But like, you know, let's talk about that. Like, it's always a concern. It's always an issue when you want to grow. There's only so much you can spend. I'd love for you to tell people, like, how you found your investors and how you got to your point. I mean, I always tell every, like, startup founder, it's not easy to raise money. It absolutely is. And I wish it should be a full-time job. You wish you could hire someone else to do it. But the best person to do it is the CEO and the founder yeah. of the company. Yeah, yeah. It's the only person to do it, right? And for us, it's just lily pads, right? Like we, um, just to, to kind of share how we met um, without like saying names necessarily. Yeah. But um, but um, but we, we met through Tracy, right? And um, mm-hmm. uh, you, you shook it off. So I, I'll just say her first name. So we met through Tracy. No, it's and, true. And, and Tracy introduced, um, I met Tracy because, so being an entrepreneur, like I'm going to be so w- wise, you know, mm. <laughs> like just, just so your audience knows, nobody has this figured out. Right. Right. No. And, 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 and unless you have a rich uncle someplace, you don't have it figured out. You're just kind of figure it out as you go along. But, um, but it's just really putting one foot in front of the other. And, and I call them lily pads, right? Like mm. being able to jump from one to the next. And for yeah. us, the lily pad was that we um, were in the middle of 2020 trying to figure out, you know, what our next steps were. And then, um, and then, uh, oh yeah. So then, so, so we joined a professional organization, uh, called Sprocket, um, back Mm -hmm. in 2019. Sprocket introduced us to a guy named, uh, Jason, um, uh, Scott at, at, uh, Google. Um, that led to an application for one of their um, accelerators. We we were then placed in the we, we were then uh, awarded um, and chosen out of uh, 2,500 companies nationwide to be a part of their uh, inaugural voice AI accelerator uh, in in 20 was that 2020 or 2021? Um, and then uh, and then from that accelerator we met Tracy and Tracy introduced us to you. Um, and, and she came on as an advisor and then later became an investor. Um, and, uh, and then, and then, you know, more, and then Google invested in us. And then, mm-hmm. and then from that original Sprocket, um, yeah. uh, investment on our part, by the way, cause it's a professional organization, uh, with a, you know, with a fee to join, but it's so well worth it. We were, yeah. we actually, um, got our most recent investor, which has led to our big launch that's coming up this summer. So, oh, yeah, it's not a it's not a straight line. Absolutely not. You know, yeah, I didn't even know all that leading up to it, but I knew it was like we were through Tracy. Yeah, how funny, how funny. Oh, and so then, like you know, you, you you've been doing this for a while, raising money. You know, talking to a bunch of investors. Like, what is the ideal investor for yourself? You know, is it someone who believes in you, the product, the team? Like, what do you think is the best? Like, what you've done well to get people to believe and put in money? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. This is a this isn't really a, a PC, or I no. don't know. This isn't a really great answer. I, I don't have any coaching on this answer, so it's going to be just no, raw. No experience. But but, that's, that's but not, I, no. honestly speaking. If the person has any level of diversity mm-hmm. themselves, culturally diverse, if they have any level of experience themselves mm-hmm. dealing with culturally diverse communities, or they mm-hmm. are themselves culturally diverse, they have no problem seeing what we have. That's yeah. really it. That's it's yeah. really it. If you put me in front of somebody who's going to see the technology and, 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 uh, uh, and, and evaluate the technology on its merit, and then it's a no-brainer. So, so what we've tried to do is put ourselves in a position to be in front of as many people like that as possible, and it's been working. It's been working. Wonderful. And so let's talk about, like, you know, you've had some wins, you had some, you know, failures. Like, what advice would you give to a young founder trying to bring their vision to life, like that you've learned as an entrepreneur? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, I mean, my my personal faith and i don't have a religion when people mm-hmm. say faith they it, 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 like automatically go to one religion or another i don't have a right. religion my personal faith though um in a in a higher um being um in a higher spirit is um is 
is my foundation and it's why I do everything that I do um, when I wake up in the morning to when I go to sleep. And, um, and that is my guiding force for what I'm going to do with my life. So I didn't mm -hmm. set out to be an entrepreneur. I didn't, I just set out to, to be respectful and honoring what I believed was my mission and the thing that I was supposed to do, bring to this world. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, and that brought me into this space and it led me to so many amazing people like you. Um, and, um, and so, so I, I would say that it's less about doing some things or not doing other things and more about just doing you and being true to whatever is driving you inside. Because if you're true to that, then whether you decide to be a plumber or own a plumbing, um, um, company or whatever you're doing, you're going to find what the next step is um, because it's just who you are to stay alive, right? To keep your spirit alive. Does that make sense or did I wax too uh, philosophical there? It makes total, total sense to me because it's just, uh, it, it's everyone has their own journey and it's, 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 it's not easy. It's like everyone thinks like, you know, the lie of academia, I used to put it, it's like, okay, you pass these tests and then you know, but that doesn't mean anything in, real, in the real world. Like you're not given a B to solve for C, yeah. you know, you, don't, you, nothing's given to you. You have every, you have to find everything yourself and figure it out yourself. And like you said, you have to fail fast and learn quick, you know, hire the right people, but fire right away. If they're not working out, I mean, it is a journey every day. It's a firefight. You know, yeah. And I mean, more it's, more practically, it's it's um, it's uh, you know, the the advice is to um, you're right. It's 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 right. The the failing part, but it's like you know, figuring out what the lessons are. I mean, more practically, it's 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 always being able to look inside and see um, you know, where where the cause of that last failure was, and you know what you did. Um, to, right. to cause that, how you were responsible for it so you can move through it to the next. I mean, I just told my, my team the other day, you know, one thing that I allow myself to do is sometimes if somebody's really good, I, they, they can, um, I let them talk me into a different path, which might be different than what I or originally told them that I yeah. wanted out of this project or, um, you know, or, um, or, or, you know, product push. And mm -hmm. ultimately it's a waste of time because we will always come back to what I originally asked. So that's like right. something that I'm working on myself, which is, look, you might not understand this, but this is what we're going to do right now. And it's going to pan out and you're going to see it mm -hmm. in about a week and a half. <laughs> so it's like, uh, like getting people to, to believe me blindly sometimes, which is, which is kind of the, the, the task of, of any leader. Yeah. No, absolutely. So speaking of which, like the being the leader, like, you know, are there any books or publications or other podcasts that you tell your team to listen to or that you think is important that you take to your job as being the founder and CEO of Needle? Yeah, uh, I, I think character is really important, right? Um, because uh, I, I hire I hire people who who take responsibility for their mistakes. Uh, mm -hmm. It's my biggest pet pet peeve. It's like if if, yeah. if something went wrong and you can't say my bad, uh, yeah. it's not going to work out. Um, and so, you know, when you think about character, I can't think of a better book than the the science of being great by mm. Wallace D. Waddles. Have you have you read this book yet? No, I haven't. No, I'll put it on my list. I mean, it's really incredible. It's a short read, mm. and it's okay. so practical, so under like, and really, it, it's like. I, I don't know. It, it just feels like um, this book that everyone should read. And it, it talks about how to treat people well, how to how to get treated well. It's it's and, and the principles are easily um, uh, applicable to, to business. Mm, amazing. So from from where we started when I first invested, where we are now, you know, Needle, of course, has gone through a lot of iterations, a lot of pivots. Like, what have you found? like in your journey so far that has been like, wow, that was a turning point for you, for the company that you made sense for you. It's like, Oh, now I know better what I need to do or, or no, I figured out what the product market fit was. Yeah. I think it's, it goes back to what I was just being vulnerable with my team about the other day, which mm -hmm. is that, 
that I had it. We had it right when we first mm -hmm. launched, right? So we had it right when we first launched. We launched uh, in, um, you know, we, we launched with this product that allowed you to search 100,000 plus radio stations um, uh, for live news, live sports. Mm -hmm. Like when I say radio, people immediately think, think music, but, but live news, live sports, live talk, live information. Um, and um, by the key words that are being said right now, right? So mm -hmm. w what we did was uh, our technology basically takes machine learning and, um, and speech to text machine learning and, um, and, and combines it with our own real-time keyword search technology. Um, and so, um, so we, we made all that stuff searchable, including podcasts, um, right. millions and millions of podcasts and the ability to broadcast yourself live. So all that searchable, and, um, and that's what this new, new launch is about. We're going back to our, our roots because we, we pivoted from that and just focused on the user-generated content um, for, for about a year and a half. And um, while that was good, what ultimately happens when you just have user-generated content is you put too much pressure on the, the users to create content. Not everybody's a content creator. So, so what we've done is we've gone back to the original. We have been very smart about how we did that. And um, I can't wait for you guys to, 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 uh, to see what, where your investment dollars went because we've made this platform very robust, very um, beautiful, and very useful. Very useful. Yeah. No, absolutely. I'd love to hear, get your insight on what you think the world of podcasts have become now, right? You see a lot of consolidation, you know, a lot of great companies like Amazon or, you know, Pandora, or Apple, or, you know, buying up, you know, mm -hmm. not necessarily like uh, technology right now, but all, but like content creators. Right. Mm -hmm. And you like from my world in investing, like CPG companies, they really focus on podcasts as a source mm -hmm. of like getting their products out there. So I'm curious, what, what do you think has, been the, the evolution now of the podcast from where you started with iHeartRadio till now? Yeah, um, well, I think that, I, so iHeartRadio used to be called Clear Channel, right? And um, and then the Telecommunications Act of 1996 allowed Clear Channel and CBS and companies like that to buy up a whole bunch of different radio stations, which created a, yeah. a wall garden for the microphone for the first time in our country. And that meant mm -hmm. that you had to go through Clear Channel, these big companies, to get to the to the microphone, and because yep. they were create, traded on the stock market, that meant that it was even harder to do because all they cared about was playing hits and making people like them, and etc. So it was less about being less about being voices of their communities anymore, and more about getting to the bottom line. And so podcasting emerged at that same time, not an accident, because podcasts allow um, smaller voices per se to 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 have access to the microphone again. So we're, we're seeing the same thing play out over and over again, which is first it was Clear Channel, which is now iHeartRadio. Um, they, they cordoned off the microphone and now podcasts um, are going to be doing the same thing because now the big companies are buying all the Joe Rogans and all these other things and consolidating them. And so once again, we're seeing the microphone just kind of being like, um, you know, uh, you just kind of like scooting away from uh, communities and people and smaller voices. So, so we we see this as a huge market opportunity to not only serve uh, people who already have huge audiences and want to be heard um, uh, without the siloed uh, effect of you know just being on Apple Music or just being on Spotify or just being on on YouTube. Um, they can on our platform they can be heard uh, anywhere that anybody has the web. Um, because you don't have to have the app to listen to um, your voice, Jonathan, uh, on our platform. Um, so, so we think that's a huge opportunity. We see the, the siloing effect as being a huge opportunity. And, um, and ultimately, you know, what all these, these, these companies are doing is just making it um, easier for, um, for, for, for disruptors like us to come along and, and give the people what they want outside of these silos. No, amazing. And and lastly, I'd love to ask you this, like, what do you think the play is to get people to your platform? You know, I mean, I think everyone talks about like, oh, customer acquisition costs or whatever. I've heard, I've heard so many investments like, oh, I have a new creator uh, platform, you know, and it's like, oh, I'm going to get all the top stars from here to move here. And I'm like, I think that's 
that's not going to work. You know, it's like, I think people are going to use multiple different types of platforms, whether it's Instagram to TikTok to needle to engage just whether their audience or whatever they want to do. Like, what do you think is important from your perspective to have your icon be the next, you know, Instagram or Twitter or whatever for an influencer or for somebody who wants to reach a mass audience? Well, mission matters, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a, a lot of these companies, you know, you either can identify who the, who the, the owner is or who the founders are, or if you do identify them, you wish that you didn't know who they were, right? So, um, so I think mission matters. I think, um, I think people are putting their money where their mouth is and vice versa when it comes to podcasting and, and being associated with, with different companies. I think if we can, you know, do what, um, stay true to our original cause, which is to democratize access to information and the microphone itself. I think we win in the, in the long run because our, our purpose is to make sure that the masses win and that, um, that information is free again. And, uh, and, and, and I think that's how we'll be successful. Yeah. You know, I thought that was going to be last year, but I'm just curious about one more thing. Allende. So what is your thoughts of Web3? You know, like, you know, we're, we're moving away from whatever you think Web2 is and what Facebook or Instagram or Google were for as technological platforms, you know. Web3 is about, you know, whether you're decentralized or like the user owns their own data, you know. But I think it's really like the relationship a brand builds with their customer is more important about that's the next generation of what Web3 will be. I'm curious, how do you think Needle or how you're viewing it makes sense for your startup? Yeah, it's interesting because because um, I have a, a number of different views about it. I mean, number one, it's like if Web three is owned by the same people who owned Web one and two, yeah, we're gonna, right. we're gonna need one we're at Web four pretty soon, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's part of my. But it, but what we're doing at Needle is that we're being very very focused on discovery of audio and whether you are a live television radio station whether you are a live uh, radio whether you're live streaming whether you're a voice um, product or whether you're web3 and have avatars everywhere you've got a voice stream attached to your um your audio and that's where needle comes in because as long as there's um uh, audio that needs to be transcribed and searchable then you need our technology. We, we, we earned our patents on our technology. We're the only company that can search live audio in the world. And so because of that, we feel like if we continue to focus on that, that Web3 will actually come to us and we won't have to chase that. So that's kind of how we're positioning. Great. Wonderful. Hey, thank you so much for being here. If someone wants to contact, connect with you or find Needle, where should they go? What should they do? Well, the easiest thing to do is go to needle.com forward slash Allende, which is my name. And anybody can listen to my broadcast, even if they don't download the app and they can have their own uh, custom URL by, by signing up to the needle. And I'll, I'll make the announcement here, needle mm -hmm. studio app. So the needle oh. studio app allows them to, to, um, so they can download it uh, in the app store uh, beginning at the end of July. Uh, so, uh, so they can do that. And they can also reach out to me at Allende at findneedle.com. Great. Thank you so much for being here today. And look, we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Yeah. Thank you again, Allende. Thank you, Jonathan.